I believe that women do tend to be more vulnerable to manipulation than men. And I believe that Democrats figured this out even before women were given the vote in 1920. And I believe that they have been targeting, exploiting, and manipulating women ever since. Should women vote? Mr. Reagan. Check out this chart. This graph has been shared quite a lot on X. Unmarried women are the only demographic group that votes majority Democrat. Married women, married men, and single men all recognize the absurdity of voting for Democrats. So naturally, this begs the question, wouldn't the world be better if women didn't vote? We'll dig into this question in one moment. First, of course, I have to sell you something. Are you prepared for what's coming? Remember how difficult it was to get proper medical care during COVID? Sick people were left to fend for themselves, unable to receive the help they needed. Now, with another election coming upon us, the deep state knows that justice is coming. And as we've seen, the powers that be are acting like cornered animals, and they will be at their most dangerous as the election nears. We need to prepare our minds, our hearts, and also our bodies. I would like to introduce you to Zeolite Extra Spray from Epic Minerals, your ultimate defense against heavy metals and other toxins that compromise your health. This powerful formula detoxifies your body, eliminating heavy metals and other poisons. If there is an impending crisis, the ability to cleanse your system to maintain a healthy body could mean the difference between life and death. Don't wait until it's too late. Arm yourself with Zeolite Extra Spray and ensure you are prepared for whatever the deep state throws your way. Stay vigilant, stay healthy. Epic Minerals, your defense against a toxic world. Go to www.epicminerals.net, promo code Reagan to save 10% off of your order. So, should women vote? The answer to this question is, I think, fixed. Women are legally permitted to vote in America, and I don't see that changing ever. However, I have noticed that there are more and more conservative women calling for the repeal of the 19th Amendment and removing women's right to vote. An up-and-coming social media star from Miami called, I think her, her name is Arian Wexler, she posted this the other day. She wrote, Unhappy, unmarried liberal women are the only reason Democrats are competitive. I am ready to give up the vote. It's like screaming into the wind. Okay, I'm ready to give up the vote. Take it away. In case you missed the title above, this is a map of how voting would look if only men voted. The low T soy betas, obviously on the coastal cities. This is the dream. You could not put a more tantalizing map in front of me. Unless of course, if this map just showed California magically breaking off from the rest of us. But oh my God. Listen, Nate Silver and 538, they've put stuff like this out before. I don't think it was ever this red. But I'm not surprised. We know guys are trending more conservative and why wouldn't they with all the brain bashing going on these days? There are so many great articles now about high school guys, college guys also finding their voice and my vote's getting me nowhere. It's like screaming into the wind because unhappy, unmarried liberal women are the only reason Democrats are competitive. Look at this chart. If you look at married men, married women, and unmarried men, Republicans get the majority. It is only in the unmarried women category, which is just so overwhelmingly in favor of Democrats that they possibly win elections. So yeah, F it, F it, I'll do it. If it would mean that we could actually win something, just take it before I change my mind. And a lot of women have said this over the years, even since the days of the suffrage movement at the turn of the century, a lot of women did not want the vote. I remember this very specifically from Ann Coulter. <laughs> women should have the right to vote, but should they vote? <laughs> well, as you know, my position is women should not have the right to vote. <laughs> Good. It's very popular on college campuses. Yeah, I mean, we'll lose the odd Anne <laughs> as collateral damage, but... No, I'll still, we can still write books. We can run for office. You just can't vote. Exactly. And look, you have to wonder, are these women just trying to be provocative or are they serious? Well, regardless, just as an intellectual exercise, let's actually take this question seriously for a minute. Why do women vote in America? Well, people believe that this is a human rights issue. The theory is that if all men are created equal, the word men traditionally being synonymous with the word human, uh, then every citizen within a representative democracy should be given the opportunity to vote. But actually, no, that's not exactly true. We don't let children vote, and we don't let felons vote. And we all recognize the reasons for these prohibitions. Children, we believe, in general, lack the experience and the intellectual acuity to be trusted with something so profound as choosing the representatives in our government. Felons have proven themselves 
irresponsible to such a degree that they cannot be trusted. I mean, so long as they're convicted legitimately. But if we think about this logically, these probably are not the only members of society that should be prohibited from voting. In a perfect version of America, only true patriots would vote, and only the most rational true patriots, those with the best judgment, those who are the least easily manipulated, and those who are the least gullible. But we do not live in this perfect world, and so a lot of people vote who really shouldn't. And Democrats have become experts at targeting and manipulating vulnerable citizens. Citizens who perhaps don't have the best judgment or discernment, and Democrats have become experts at convincing these people to vote Democrat. Democrats don't want you to be rational or intelligent or use common sense because then you might vote Republican. In fact, there is a very limited subset of the population that I think should be voting, even more limited than what I described above. I've promoted the idea for a long time now that if you benefit from any kind of government assistance beyond that which you pay in taxes, then you shouldn't vote. There is also an idea out there that only people who own property should get to vote. I'm also a proponent of this idea as it indicates that you have some stake in the country. You have invested in the land. You have something to lose. But I don't think we're ever going to change our voting laws in this way. Most people would reject these ideas without even thinking them through. And if we're not going to discriminate based on who's demonstrably invested in the country or disqualify voters based on who is simply leeching off the government, then discriminating based on immutable characteristics, gender, that seems brutally unfair. And I think that most people believe that if we were to strip women of the right to vote, then it would seem to indicate that we as a culture acknowledge that men are superior to women. And I understand that thinking. I don't agree with it, but I understand why people would think that. But here's why I disagree. What if the act of voting is simply a responsibility that men are specifically suited to take on? And what if the reason for that is a single difference between men and women? That single difference being, very specifically, vulnerability to manipulation. I believe that women do tend to be more vulnerable to manipulation than men. And I believe that Democrats figured this out even before women were given the vote in 1920. And I believe that they have been targeting, exploiting, and manipulating women ever since. Everything that the left does is to create an emotional effect on women. When Democrat politicians say that they want to help immigrants, what they really want is for American women to believe that they are the more generous political party. They trick women into thinking that gay Americans are bullied and oppressed and hated and that they are vulnerable. And so when they support gay pride, women think, oh, the Democrat Party, Democrat politicians, they're heroes. They create this illusion of systemic racism and then they pretend to care about black Americans so that they seem like they're civil rights activists fighting the good fight. But this is all a show. It's all an act. It's all a manipulation. And yeah, look, of course they want the gay vote, they want the black vote, and they want the immigrant vote. But really, at the core of the Democrat Party is that female vote. And the real trick is that women don't want to believe that they're being manipulated by the left. And so it's extremely difficult to convince a woman that she's being tricked. Try telling a woman that everything that she believes about politics is a lie that was invented to manipulate her so that she would vote Democrat. Or even just tell a woman about one issue. In response to this, it is extremely unlikely that this woman will break down the reasons why she votes a particular way. Instead, I'll tell you exactly what she's going to do. She's almost certainly going to call you a bigot. Now, occasionally, very rarely, a woman does figure this stuff out. So it seems like a lot of celebrities are kind of like voting for Trump now. I mean, why do you think people are kind of like changing their way of like... I think we're just, voting? we just did our research and we're just, you know, we're not brainwashed anymore by the left. Um, I can say that about myself. All these years I've been brainwashed and I'm not anymore. Mm -hmm. so. Amazing. Brilliant. I hope this woman changes the minds of millions of Americans. But unfortunately, I think that she is the exception. So how do we fight against this? How do we win this propaganda war? Well, we need to wake up. We need to start to recognize the power of storytelling. We conservatives, we don't really bother with marketing our ideas. You see, we are confident in our ideas because the ideas that we have about politics, they're based on truth, on fact. 
and we use logic and reason and common sense to try to fix problems and to try to improve quality of life in America. Democrat ideas, on the other hand, they're not good ideas. They're based on lies. They're based on misperceptions of reality. And so first, they need to sell the lie. They need to force people to misperceive reality. And only after that can they then try to sell their bad ideas that they have created based on these lies. I mean, it's a lot of work. We conservatives, we look at our neatly prepared ideas based on truth. And then we look over at the Democrats trying to sell their absurd lies, all the work they're doing, all the hullabaloo. And we tend to laugh at them. But the reality is that truth is kind of boring. And lies, lies that the liars put so much work into making look cool, they're actually kind of fun. And so when somebody who doesn't know much about politics, he, they look at the conservative ideas, neatly prepared little gray packages, and then they look over to the Democrat ideas, which are like pff, a circus. I think a lot of people go, oh, you know what, that looks a lot more fun. And so at the end of the day, if conservatives want to win over all of America, young people, women, etc., we can't just keep relying on truth and honesty and facts and reason and logic and common sense. Now, conservatives need to tell better stories. And look, this is difficult because there's only one truth and there there's an infinite number of lies. So telling the most compelling lie is always going to be a lot easier than crafting the best way to tell the truth. But that is exactly what we need to do. The Biden administration has actually recruited Hollywood legend and genius storyteller Steven Spielberg to come in and craft a positive narrative for the 2024 campaign for Joe Biden. Steven frickin' Spielberg. The left, as a black American might say, ain't playing. Look, we need to put as much effort into promoting our good ideas as the left puts into promoting their bad ideas. Washington, D.C. is famous for their corrupt think tanks. Well, we need an honest think tank. We need to bring in some top storytellers from the right. We need to brainstorm how to craft every conservative issue and popularize each narrative so that we're telling a compelling story. I'll do it. Bring me in. I am ready to go. Of course, I'm never going to get that call because conservative politicians and strategists, they just don't get it. They do not understand the power of good storytelling. They're all convinced that the truth, whatever way you tell it, will sell itself. But it won't. The left likes to say that there are lots of different truths. And of course, we all know that that's nonsense. There's only ever one truth. But we also need to recognize that there's an infinite number of ways of telling that truth. So although we may not have the breadth of options the left does in terms of telling the best lies, we can at least find the best way to tell the truth. In the end, of course, women should vote. We cannot, in good conscience, strip the right to vote from a demographic group with one particular immutable characteristic simply because a lot of them happen to be gullible. There are so many women who are sensible and smart and patriotic and discerning that our culture has to allow them as a group to vote because we need to protect these brilliant women. The ruthlessly rational solution to the problem of irrational voting may be to strip women of the vote, but the moral solution is simply for conservatives to tell better stories. We need to promote art among conservatives. We need more conservative artists. We need to create our own films and TV shows and have our own distribution systems to get these quality projects out into the world. And we need projects that emotionally affect people in the right way. I think Angel Studios does a great job of this, but since their projects are so often criticized as right wing, I think a lot of people just neglect to even watch these films. The left is just so good at propaganda that I think that this will always be an uphill battle for us. And honestly, it's a battle that a lot of conservatives just don't understand. They just don't understand the power of storytelling. And that's because we're not so affected by it. We don't confuse fiction with reality. We dismiss nonsense. But leftists aren't like us. They embrace nonsense. It doesn't matter if you're lying to them or you're telling the truth. Democrat voters just want to be told a good story. And that's what we have to learn how to do tell great stories. Well, that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And remember, it's not that a liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much that is not so. That ending 
could not have been more appropriate for this particular episode. All right, guys, good night. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last 